We are glad to welcome you to our channel. Kindly subscribe to our channel and share our videos with your friends and relations. And click on the bell icon for instant notification whenever new videos are uploaded on this channel. Rest assured that we are going to have a very exciting and inspiring discussion. Let's dive into the lesson right away. In today's lesson, we are going to learn how English grammar really works. I am Benjamin from English Classes Online. Let's dive into it right away. What is English grammar? English grammar can be described as the rules that govern the arrangement of words in sentences. It refers to the rules about the structure of words, phrases, clauses, and sentences. What are units of grammar all about? Units of grammar are those word parts words or groups of words that make up the English grammatical structures. Units of grammar provide a form of order in language where smaller units combine to make up higher units. For example, morphemes combine to form a word, words combine to form a phrase, phrases combine to form a clause and clauses combine to form a sentence. Let's look at units of grammar at a glance. Here you have the units of grammar with the sentence uh, right on the top and you have the morpheme on the bottom. So you, you, when we look at this structure in an ascending order, we look at the morpheme, the word, the phrase, the clause, and the sentence. And they work as follows. Morphemes combine to form a word. Words combine to form a phrase, and phrases combine to form a clause while clauses combine to form a sentence. Of course, when we write, we write in sentences and a number of sentences can form a paragraph and a number of paragraphs can form a page and so on and so forth. But of course, the sentence is the largest grammatical unit that enables us to communicate our ideas in a very complete manner. In other words, the sentence enables us to express a complete thought. Now, when we look at the structure of the sentence, we can use the inverted pyramid to demonstrate what this structure looks like. This is not a perfect diagram but it can help us to illustrate the structure. So here, well, let me use them. Um, here we have sentences, let's call sentences S, followed by the clauses. Let's call clauses. CL, then followed by the phrases, let's call phrases PH. Followed by the words, let's call words W. And followed by the morphemes, let's call morphemes M. So that this is the kind of structure the largest right on the top is the sentence. And all these other units, morpheme, word, phrase, and clause, these all combine to form a sentence. And then we use the sentence to communicate whatever message 
we want to communicate. That is how English grammar works. But let's now begin to look at all this in some greater detail, okay? Let's begin with the morpheme. A morpheme is the smallest indivisible unit of language that sets meaning apart. And as we earlier mentioned, morphemes combine to form a word. For example, in this sentence, we have 22 morphemes. The obedient boys were working in the garden while their disobedient brothers were playing in the field. We have 22 morphemes, and as we earlier mentioned, morphemes combine to form a word. So you have boy plus s, these are two morphemes that will give you the word boys. Then you have working. Work plus ing gives you working. Disobedient, this plus obedient gives you disobedient. Brothers, brother plus S gives you brothers. Playing, play plus ing gives you playing. So it, this shows how morphemes combine to form a word. Now let's look at the word. A word is a single, distinct, meaningful unit of language that can be spoken or written. And as we already mentioned, words combine to form a phrase. So in the sentence we earlier mentioned, we have 17 words, whereas we counted 22 morphemes in the same sentence, but we learned that morphemes combine to form words. So we have 17 words formed by 22 morphemes. The disobedient boys were working in the garden while they are, uh, the obedient boys were working in the garden while their disobedient brothers were playing in the field. 17 words. And then how do words combine to form a phrase? Let's look at it uh, in this way. When you look at the disobedient boys, you have three boys combining to form what we call noun phrase. We can call it NP. We are working. Where and working are two words that combine to form, well, let's use a different color. They combine to form the verb phrase, let's call this VP. In the garden, in the garden in the garden. These three words combine to form what we call the prepositional phrase in the garden. Let's call this PP. While they are disobedient brothers, disobedient brothers, they are disobedient brothers. You have three words again, combining to fall from another noun phrase. So here you have a second noun phrase. We are playing. So we are playing is another verb phrase. We are playing. We are playing. And this is what we call the verb phrase. We call this VP verb phrase in the field in the field is another prepositional phrase in the field this is another prepositional phrase we call this pp 
Okay? So that's exactly the way it is. The disobedient boys were working in the garden while their disobedient brothers were playing in the field. Okay? The disobedient boys, one noun phrase, were working, verb phrase, in the garden, prepositional phrase, um, while they are disobedient brothers, okay? So you can see. So we have six phrases here, 17 words here combined to form six phrases. All right, we have two noun phrases, two verb phrases, and two prepositional phrases. Of course, we have a subordinating conjunction, which only serves to join the two clauses together. So we are taking a look at how the English grammar works, and we are looking at the anatomy of the English sentence structure, if you like. And we are taking a profound look at how it really works. So let's move on to the next unit of grammar, and that is the phrase. The phrase is a group of words used as a single part of speech. And as we earlier mentioned, phrases combine to form a clause. Using the same sentence we have already seen the disobedient boys we are working in the garden while their disobedient brothers were playing in the field here we have six phrases and we earlier saw how these six uh, phrases we are formed by combination of various words okay and then we are going to look at how these phrases combine to form a, a clause. For example, the disobedient boys we are playing, we are working in, I mean, the obedient boys who are working in the garden. This is a main clause. This forms a clause. While they are disobedient brothers, you see, this is a second clause. While they are disobedient brothers we are playing in the field this is what we can call a subordinate clause so we have mc sorry i omitted c here mc here stands for main clause sc here stands for subordinate clause This is S, please. Subordinate clause here. Okay. So here we have uh, we have two clauses formed by six phrases. We have three phrases in the first clause. The disobedient voice, one phrase we are working another phrase in the garden another phrase three phrases combining to form the main clause here in the second clause we have they are disobedient brothers one clause we are playing another clause in the field another clause three clauses forming the subordinate clause so phrases combine to form a clause and this brings us to the clause. A clause is a group of words with the subject-verb combination that can form a sentence or part of a sentence. And we earlier mentioned that clauses combine to form a sentence. Now, using the same sentence, we can see that we have two clauses here. The obedient boys were working in the garden while their disobedient brothers were playing in the field. Uh, we earlier broke this into two. 
okay? And when we look at this, the obedient boys were walking in the garden. This is one clause. While their disobedient brothers were playing in the fields, this is another clause. We call this main clause MC. And we call this subordinate clause SC. So clauses combine to form a sentence. So here we have two clauses, okay? And they combine to form this single sentence. So that is exactly the way it works. And so now we are going to look at the last, but not the least. On the contrary, is the largest unit of grammar called the sentence. The sentence is a group of words with the subject-verb combination that can express a complete thought. And as we earlier mentioned, it is the highest unit of grammar that is used to convey complete meaning. When we speak or write in sentences, we express complete thoughts and we convey complete meaning. Now, all the other units of grammar all combine to form this single sentence. The obedient boys were working in the garden while their disobedient brothers were playing in the field. This is one sentence, and this one sentence is made up of 22 morphemes, all right, uh, which combine to make up 17 words which in turn combine to give us six phrases and the phrases combine to form two clauses and the two clauses combine to form this single sentence. This is really how the English grammar works. We have looked at the anatomy of the English grammar. We have split the structure of the English sentence into its units, its parts, and we have looked at how they all combine meaningfully to form the higher units until the highest unit of grammar is formed, which is the sentence. Now, let's move on to the summary, uh, and in summing up, as you must have noticed, a sentence is not just any group of words. It is not simply a combination of words. The words are combined systematically to form higher units, which combine to form the next higher units until the highest unit of grammar is reached, and that is the sentence. When a sentence is formed, then we have formed or constructed the grammatical unit that enables us to communicate our ideas effectively and meaningfully. In the above sentence, as we have seen, 22 morphemes combine to form 17 words. These 17 words combine to form six phrases, which in turn combine to form two clauses. The two clauses ultimately formed a sentence. And this brings us to the end of today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed the class. If you did, make sure you like the video and share it with your friends and relations. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, kindly leave them in the comment section below. See you in the next class. Many thanks for watching today's video. A big thank you to all of you out there for being part of today's episode. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, kindly subscribe to this channel. Subscribe now as a way of giving us support. For notification about new videos, click on the bell icon find the bell icon click on it so that whenever a new video is uploaded you will be instantly notified if you have actually enjoyed the video like and share the video with your friends and relatives this is very important if you have any comments leave your comments below 
any questions, any suggestions, we would gladly receive them and respond promptly and positively to them. See you in the next video. I look forward to always seeing you in the new video.